morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. I'm down here in the park in the winter. It's a beautiful sunny day, but it's only about 17 degrees, which uh, in, in Ireland that would be warm, but here it's cold. I've got jackets and pullovers on, and of course the common law court symbol. Yes, I'm going to show you a video from Bannerman, and it's going to a little bit of the history about evictions and at the end of this video which is pretty short i'm going to show you about the scam the bank how they pretend to lend you something and you can understand why people are repossessing properties but really they have no authority to do it because the properties are already being paid for from your trust account bannerman and the guys there from the acting under common law unfortunately they're not using common law in the sheriff's office and the common law courts as they should do and having a common law court and sheriff's office to issue certificates of title because remember possession is nine tenths of the law like in a, any package or anything like that the receipt is to say that you actually paid for it and of course the certificate of title says you actually own the property which they don't give you anymore because it's all uh, it's all digital now remember there's no contracts it's, have a look at the video at the end of Bannerman and you'll see exactly how this happens now this is a beautiful winter's day here and I some people have contacted me from the UK about starting up a common law court and I had a, a interesting uh, email this morning from somebody who seems very genuine so guys get together under common law have a sheriff's office elect a sheriff get sworn, set up a court at the court take your oath of office before a jury of 12 get each of the member of the jury to sign off on that and then the sheriff then elected, make sure he knows something about the law, you know, you've got to be competent and, and you need at least a hundred people to elect you and then you take your oath and then swear in the deputies and then you have what started in the UK should end up in the UK. So good luck from now and get that common law court off the ground, but do watch Bannerman's videos which about the false paperwork which the councils here in Australia have no authority to issue a summons only a court but they're all playing hand in hand and the corruption is unbelievers there's perjury there's fraud everything's tied up in the whole system and it's it's it's, it's a, a power game and they're not going to give it up we are to blame we vote these absolutely idiotic criminal politicians here in Australia I'd like to say in my personal opinion we should have one nation Pauline Hanson and the, the, the libertarians as the pr two preferred parties because about the only group that are honest the rest are, are all fiction anyway London news sign off do watch these part one and part two of this this video it should help to explain the con job bye for now guys thanks for watching tyrannical South Yorkshire police corruption revelation aid and abet asset stripping protocol Fancy words you might think, but what you are about to hear and see is a brief introduction of a repossession process by a bank. This will shatter any illusion of the existence of legality or lawfulness in the current UK climate. Satan's system the man of lawlessness revealed were the real criminals or the ones purporting to enact justice. Pay attention to this South Yorkshire police officer and the words he chose to use. Not only did he choose to use those words, he also acted upon them. First, he said, the reality is they're going to change the locks and shutter this place. The reality is what they're changing thing? the locks and that they are going to shutter this place. This said with what is alleged to be an illegal warrant. Then he said nobody is going to stop the seizure of this property while placing his hands on his hips, appearing to aid and abet the bailiffs. Nobody's going to stop the seizure of this property. It was confirmed through photographic evidence that he was holding the same fraudulent documents which you have just seen. Then went on to say, the house has been repossessed, it will be secured and nobody, I repeat nobody, will prevent that happening. Anybody who attempts to prevent that happening will be arrested. Are you able to go and collect some personal belongings Michelle? Been repossessed. Illegally. It will be secured, okay, and nobody, I repeat nobody will prevent that happening. Anybody who attempts to prevent that happening will be arrested. Yeah, it is. Okay. So, my colleagues and I will assist. There will be a claim of restoration. This South Yorkshire police officer confirmed that he and his colleagues will assist the bailiffs. Then finally started with sarcasm. And they've got exactly around the same at the neck that you have. What? Nothing. Okay. 
However, I'm happy that they are the bailiffs who are enforced. <laughs> and what's your name, <laughs> sir? <laughs> PC White, it's on there. You say white, you and Jordan. You just say PC White. I did. Right. Why, did you got, why did you tell me you were Stuart Paul Rouse when you arrested me that time up there? And why did all documents come back as Stuart Paul Rouse? Wow. I have no idea who you are or what you're Yes, you about. do, because you seen me at Dome not long ago and asked do you know exactly who I am. You've been served. You've been served. Do not touch me, please. What You've been served. Do not touch me. Take the photo. What are they doing? I Private. I don't want to. Take it. Oh. You're taking liability. It's Show me your badge. No, no. Show me your badge. Come on, I want, a, I want identification. Show me your badge now. See it? <laughs> Come over. We need to see it. We need your ID. Oh, so there's no name on it. So you've just got your photo, your no, mugshot. You know how much you know. Yeah. I suggest you, you just, names. I suggest we you go. Names, right. Take that. We don't need to take that one. Take that. We need to get sure. stuff. I don't want that. Take it. Take it. Me. So you're not going to be, well, you're already served anyway, so it doesn't you matter. The sun looks it was Tuesday. 23rd of January 2024, Rosington, South Yorkshire. Two white vans which looked like they were from a scrapyard, a Ford Escort and a Mercedes pulled up on the opposite side of the road, alongside a black Kia car which had previously been circling the area. Two men dressed in black exited the vehicles and approached the property and claimed they were there to execute a warrant of eviction. A fraudulent, uttered, unstamped document had been received prior. They would not disclose who they were. When asked to produce the paperwork, they refused. And when asked to produce identification, they also refused. This fraudulent document, which you are about to see, contains no bailiff's details. All evictions should have a representative of the claimant and a bailiff, as stated on the warrant. This was not the case. Proof of ID, company name. Names must be given as a legal requirement, otherwise it's fraud on their part, according to the government website. On the front of their jackets, both men had the same photo ID card, which had HM courts and tribunals, and a photo, but contained no registration numbers, names, nothing. The ID cards appeared to have been fraudulently created. When asked the question, who are you? One of the men sarcastically responded, Mr. Bailiff, sniggering. They were not wearing any kind of official clothing expected of the entity they were supposed to represent. One of the men was wearing blue rubber gloves, which looked extremely dubious. When asked to take service of documents, one of them responded, stick it where the sun don't shine, to the female serving the document. Police later attended. The constables could quite clearly see the lack of disclosure and paperwork and the state of the vehicle in which they turned up. They stood and watched a continuation of harassment and intimidation before all parties left upon not gaining entry to the property. What's that spell? What's that spell? If you don't want winner, it will be us. We're at Sheffield United Executive Entrance. Yep. The business hub. What's just happened? Yeah, we just served a, a gentleman who's uh, in charge of auction house. And what seems to be happening here that they fraudulently procure property with fraudulent documentation, and then they t seem to get it pushed through through courts. And the courts are, are we're finding out now are corrupt and complicit with with all this, uh, with this going on. So then they sell them off to quickly try and sell them off at auctions when they take processions of these properties. But what they do is they use different auction houses. So one minute they can be at a, um, uh, one part of the city and then they suddenly chop it down and then bring it down there. So you're running around and there's nothing there that can, we can then chase and then stop this process. Luckily, we would manage to do this today. So I've got the eviction notice, it's in fraud. You haven't got the right paperwork yet. Yeah, it's not blue ink or anything. Because the, because the eviction was not complied with. Oh, I know all the about that. The order, the order was for whoever was an occupier of that main person and anybody else who was inside the property to have left by the 15th of no. April. 
no, 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 that's no, what it no, says. no, it doesn't. It doesn't matter what it says because it's not ratified by the court. There was no contact details for the court. Yeah. They always have to have the number on it. There's no. When I asked to produce the, when I asked for the um, court, it's a civil matter at the moment. The this, so they would not produce it. There's no stamp. It's fraud. Right. It's so, totally not a fraud. You've got to understand so that Lauren Pulteney has had and seen a copy of this. Okay. I'm sure you know very well. I'm sure I know. Yeah. But you're more than welcome to write. Right. The reality is they're changing is the locks and that they are going to shutter this place. Okay? That will be the end of it. Once it's it's time to get joined in. Make a complaint to the courts regarding the bail factions. You are well within your rights to do so. However, nobody's going to stop the procedure. Right, have you got you that? Are, you are you are welcome. You are. My colleague has. You so, are. so basically, what we've got there, right? Show me the documents again. Okay, please. I have shown you. Take it can she see again? Can she get a, so take it? Another, out another, out another, of another photo of that because that basically is a confirmation that what you're carrying as well. Thank you very much. Is also a fraudulent document. Okay. So yeah. So we've got. Are you, so we've got however, to, are you able to go and collect, collect some personal belongings, Michelle? Illegally. It will be secured. Okay. And nobody. I repeat, nobody will prevent that happening. Anybody who attempts to prevent that happening. So will be arrested. Yeah, it okay. is. Okay. So, my colleagues and I will assist. There will be a claim of restoration. Peacefully. Okay. However, you may wait out here. It's a free country. We all know that. No, it's not a free country. We don't own anything. Remember that? Yeah. We don't know a damn thing. Oh, no but we own the right to say where we are, where we live. Right now, is it? If, so, if yeah, we don't know. Oh, so, right, if you've got that on camera, you understand that there's yeah. further issues. You know that, ah. So there is no wet ink say, signature it's not, it's not on a court document. Let me speak. It's not yeah. a word game. I'm telling you, you've clearly got you've clearly got issues with the process. I think is what I'm trying to say. You've uh, I think I think the government has at the moment. <laughs> That's not going to get the clock right now, is it? Massive criminal. If you dispute the legality of the process by the bailiffs, it's been disputed. Have a look. See, look at this. Right. It's been disputed. Look at this. Right now. That has got a proper number and a name on it. It doesn't matter. Well, that's. Go and have a look at what those people have got. What around the Neck. Got right, right. It's really important. Yeah. Look at what they've got round the neck. When I asked them to produce their ID, and they've got exactly round the same the neck that you have. What? Nothing. Okay. However, I'm happy that they are the bailiffs who are enforced. So and what's your name, <laughs> sir? Listen. P C Y. It's on you, there. P C Y. Okay. Even on your own um, government website, it says that when requested, they have to produce the, the paperwork um, and the ID. They have done if, none if, of that. If you, wish to appeal, if you wish to appeal against the process that the bailiffs have so, done, so basically, did you just right, say P C Y. I did. Right. Why did you got? Why did you tell me you were Stuart Paul Rouse when you arrested me that time up there? And why did all documents come back as Stuart Paul Rouse? Wow. I have no idea who you are or what you're Yes, you about. do, because you seen me at Dome not long ago and asked do you know exactly who I am. I have no idea who you are. Yes, you do. Right. I apologise. Wow. So, many police so these are anyway. false names then that you give in. What are you in? playing at, you? Are you a, who told me you are Stuart Paul Rouse? You're under oath. Oh, my right. goodness me, right. What's right. going on here? Okay. We're okay. impersonating. I wish, I wish you a pleasant day. day. However, this property is repossessed. The locks are getting changed. It will not get any further access to it. What's your number again? What is it? 702. Chief Constable P. O. Paul M. Y. Have a nice you were the one who sprayed me, can you remember, ain't oh. I? We all make some Neil Nacker. Oh. No. You are dodgy, you. What they are, the three oh, the oh, levels, oh, so the high oh, levels. What is your feeling? I'm a pleasant day, anyway. If you're hey. asking me to move some people, I'm going to close the door. Do you not want to talk to me, Paul? I need to get into there. You won't be getting in again. What a rat you are. The same individuals returned in the same vehicles. To use a notice, of a further attempt at eviction. Remember, this is leverage of the first fraudulent notice of eviction, which was unstamped, no signature, etc. A woman resident came back to the property and found the same group of four individuals and the same two original men for the HM courts and tribunals. When the woman asked for their names and IDs, they again refused. When she asked the locksmith, he also refused, as did a woman who was also in attendance. When asked to provide the warrant, the paperwork, the ID of the claimant representative and the bailiff, they refused. Both men had the same fake HM Courts and Tribunals ID round their necks, minus names and registration numbers. Circa 
South Yorkshire Police arrive on the scene. When asked about fraudulent ID on unknown, unidentified trespassers, Paul and White stated they have got exactly round their neck what you've got. Right. It's really important. Yeah. Look at what they've got round the neck. When I ask them to produce their ID, and they've got exactly round the same at their neck that you have. What? Nothing. Okay. However, I'm happy that they are the bailiffs who are enforced. <laughs> and what's your name, sir? No, <laughs> listen. P C White. It's on you, there. You P C White. You and okay, even on your own um, government website, it says that when requested, they have to produce the, the paperwork. Um, and uh, as you can see, this is what they rely on. There's only just a, an address, there's no stamp, and there's no signature. There's no name as such at all who you can address this to. So you can contact the Mr Invisible because there's nothing there. <laughs> exactly. Well done, well spotted. And that's it. And, and that can be printed out from any computer place and then just with a stamp. And then they use that as take um, legally possession over property. As you know, that's a fraudulent document. That's 14 years imprisonment. On the 12th of May, rapid response, take back the property. Security evicted by the people. We're going to be doing World Call You as a witness to, yeah. obviously you've determined this is a civil matter, yeah? So what we'll do is we'll deal with that at a later date because obviously there's no crime being committed, yeah? So they can go to the High Court, but what we're going to do, we will drag you all down, the video evidence will be played, and, you know, people will be punished out of your, out of your force, and we will... Well, we, not yourselves. No, we well, you will your all. word that if we bring you evidence, because we'll get hold of you, we've got your number and everything, your collar number, you have to we'll send you the evidence, you have to investigate. If we have no reply off you, we are holding you accountable for when it goes to the High Court. That's why we needed you. Know. Committing perjury will get you five years in prison, and I will order the judge to, to yeah. convict yeah. immediately any criminals committing perjury on that stand, okay? So if you'd like to let your colleagues know that first come this instance, tell them that we're going to be coming after them through the High Court once and then we'll be going to prison, yeah? Okay? The property is fraudulently put up for auction, first by Auction House North West and then suddenly by Auction House South Yorkshire. This is their description. Online auction, 24th to the 25th of June, 2024. Three bedroom semi-detached house. On behalf of mortgagees, not in possession. No viewings available, cash buyers only. The property is offered for sale on behalf of the mortgagees, without vacant possession being given. We are informed that the property was taken into possession on the 2nd of May. It remained in the possession of the mortgagee until the 12th of May. On the 12th of May, a number of unknown persons retook possession of the property. Auction House Northwest have not inspected the property, but we have been advised that the property is a three-bedroom semi-detached, residing on a corner plot. Cash buyers only. Since the service of the documents upon Auction House South Yorkshire, Sam Harris of Auction House South Yorkshire and all complicit parties acting for, including, but not limited to the bank, HSBC, have, indeed, fraudulently auctioned this property in the absence of authentic valid court orders to therefore move legal title to what appears to be in the first instance a duped cash buyer. However, this is in no way remove the personal criminal liability of those involved in this demonstrable fraud. This attempt to move liability through legal title and extort money via racketeering is clear. Fraudulent fast as lightning transactions by way of corruption auction houses and complicit parties. No valid court order for the possession of the property has ever been issued by corporate entities, HM courts and tribunals. These are some of the points to bear in mind. Paul M. White of South Yorkshire Police states in the recording, the reality is they're going to chain the locks and shutter this place, all in what appears to be the absence of a legal warrant. Also states, Nobody is going to stop the seizure of this property. He now appears to be aiding and abetting. It was confirmed through photographic evidence that he was holding the same fraudulent document which you have just seen. The house has been repossessed. It will be secured and nobody, I repeat nobody, will prevent that happening. Anybody who attempts to prevent that happening will be arrested. My colleagues and I will assist. Well, South Yorkshire Police Officer, whatever your name is, the Criminal Justice and Courts Act 2015 forbids you to act in such a way. 
Let's take a look, shall we? Criminal Justice and Courts Act 2015, Section 26. Corrupt or other improper exercise of police powers and privileges. Subsection 1. A police constable listed in subsection 3 commits an offence if he or she exercises the powers and privileges of a constable improperly and b knows or ought to know that the exercise is improper. Subsection 2. A police constable guilty of an offence under this section is liable on conviction on indictment to imprisonment for a term not exceeding 14 years or a fine or both. Subsection 4. For the purpose of this section, a police constable exercises the powers and privileges of a constable improperly if a. He or she exercises a power or privilege of a constable for the purpose of achieving a benefit for himself or herself or a benefit or a detriment for another person and a reasonable person would not expect the power or privilege to be exercised for the purpose of achieving that benefit or detriment. South Yorkshire Police. What this fast-moving story as a matter of public interest. Everything is deceit. Be aware. Be informed. Things are not always as they seem. Have you had... If you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. What I'm going to tell you about is a lie so big that you may find it hard to believe. It's centered around the banks. The banking industry has been stealing huge amounts of your money for decades. Much, much more than you ever imagined. But it's not just them. They've been colluding with the legal profession, the courts, politicians, and law enforcement to make sure you have very little chance to do anything about it. As a result, People have been losing their homes to these thugs by the thousands. This is the mortgage scam. It's the largest financial scam in the history of the world. The numbers are astronomical, almost unimaginable. You may not believe it at first, so I urge you to do your own research. But let's look at an example. Say you're a typical home buyer. You want to buy a home, but you don't have the required amount of money to be able to pay for it in full. So you go to a bank to secure a mortgage. Now, let's say that mortgage is for $300,000. That's how much you want to borrow. Here's a fact that you need to know up front. Banks don't lend money. They don't actually have any money. Well, not money that they can lend. Banks purchase securities. Now, securities can be stocks and bonds but they can also be guarantees to advance funds. That's known as a promissory note. When you apply for a loan or mortgage, the bank requires you to sign a promissory note. Now, you think you're signing a contract, but you're not. A contract requires signatures from both parties, you and the bank. But if you went to look at the bank contract, you would find only one signature, and that's yours. A promissory note is legal tender. It's like a check. It's known in finance as a negotiable instrument. In other words, as good as cash. The promissory note is a promise to pay the bank the amount of the mortgage. In other words, the same amount you want to borrow. They promote this piece of paper as a contract, but it's not. This is contract fraud because they're not disclosing what they're actually doing. They're tricking you. They may also present this promissory note to you as an agreement, which allows them to avoid using the word contract to supposedly lessen their legal liability. But it's just more trickery. Black's Law Dictionary, which is the dictionary used as the basis for today's admiralty court system, defines an agreement as follows. An agreement, as the courts have said, is nothing more than a manifestation of mutual assent by two or more parties legally competent persons to one another. An agreement is not enforceable by law, but to even be valid, it must have two signatures, which if you're dealing with a bank mortgage, it never does. More trickery. But it gets much, much worse. 
Let's take a step back into the past. Everybody alive today has a financial bond attached to them through their birth certificate. You're not told about this bond. It was created by law in England in 1666, a long time ago. The law has a French name, the Sestui Cavi Trust Act. It's also referred to as your straw man. In those days, people would go abroad in ships to discover the new world or otherwise travel for long periods of time away from their homes. In 1666, after the fire of London destroyed the entire city, trusts were set up to protect people's property while they were gone. When they returned, they were required to prove that they were alive in order to reclaim their property through their trust. Over time, this trust evolved to the point that when you're born, up to a million dollars is deposited in your trust. And from that point on, it's traded on the stock market as a bond. Now, these bonds grew over time into multi-millions of dollars, and you're the beneficiary. These trusts are also called your straw man because they've created a legal fiction name, the same as your natural name, but while your natural name is in upper and lower case letters, the straw man name is in all capital letters. We call this a legal fiction because it's not actually you, but you're led to believe it is. You'll find this legal fiction name on your driver's license, your utility bills, your speeding tickets, hey, and when you're called to court. It's how they get you to agree to let them access your trust, which is what they ultimately want so they can steal your money. Names in all capital letters denote a corporation. That's because banks can't actually sue a living man or woman, just a legal fiction name in capital letters. See how ingenious these folks are? When you get a utility bill with your name in caps, it means they're actually billing your trust. They take that charge out of your trust, but you pay that same utility bill thinking it's you that they're billing. But it's not. They're billing your trust. So they're getting paid twice. They're double dipping. Do some research on the word straw man and you'll find out the truth in a lot more detail than I'm providing here. Back to the promissory note and the bank. Now, once the bank has the promissory note you signed, they go ahead and they process that payment, taking the money out of your Sestweek of E-Trust or your straw man account. All banks, credit card companies, the courts, the utility companies have access to the money in your trust or your straw man account. All they need is your name, your social security number, or in Canada, social insurance number, and your signature. The bank pockets this payment and then sets up a separate bank account for you in which they deposit your money. Or they might give you a check, which then you pay to the home seller to complete the purchase. In fact, what they're doing is getting you to pay for your new home with your money from your trust. But of course, they don't tell you that. This is mortgage fraud of the highest degree. In other words, what is sold to you as a mortgage contract is actually a cash swap. You give them the money from your trust, they give it back to you to pay for the house. The bank, the bank fraudulently misrepresents this swap and fraudulently tells you, the home buyer, that the money they deposit into your account comes from their bank reserves. In other words, it's a bona fide loan. Nothing could be further from the truth. The bottom line, there's no lawful contract because the bank has put up nothing of their own and there's no loan transaction. The transaction is nothing other than a cash swap. Then they charge you compound interest on your money and tell you to pay the entire amount back to them. This results in huge returns to the bank or mortgage company over a protracted period of time, often 20 years or more. You end up paying about three times what you should for your home. Let's go back to our example. You apply for a $300,000 mortgage to be paid back over 25 years. The interest rate is, let's say, 5% compounded annually. Now, what does that amount to in interest? $750,000 roughly, add in the principal for a grand total of over a million dollars. 
<laughs> That's more than three times what the original price of your home was. This is the amount the bank pockets on the entire transaction over the 25 years. And it's all your money. That's the scam. It's been going on since mortgages began. So to recap, the bank gets you to sign a promissory note promoted to you as a contract, which is a lie. That's fraud. Then they cash in the promissory note by stealing the money from your trust account. Then they fraudulently loan your money back to you with compound interest on top. How's that for a scam? Ingenious, isn't it? How would you know? Well, you wouldn't. But hold on, because this lie gets even bigger. What they really want is your land. That's the ultimate prize. How do they get the land? Well, these days what they do is they set up mortgages for individuals with questionable credit ratings. Then they wait for them to default. I mean, just a few missed payments can send the fraudulent agreement into default. Then what they do is they send their attorneys after you using the completely corrupt admiralty law system. The courts, of course, are in on the scam. Admiralty law, the law of the sea, is our current legal system. It's been weaponized against us. The courts are completely corrupt from top to bottom. And I have court documents to prove it. The fraud is conducted by the Bar Association, B-A-R. That stands for the British Accredited Registry. These bar attorneys pledge allegiance to the British Queen or King, whoever happens to be in charge at the time. All bar attorneys do this, even the judges. That makes them all illegal foreign agents and all working together in collusion. All these bar attorneys are working against you to steal your land, even if they're defending you in court. They work as a team to defraud you. It's a completely corrupt system.